Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. But Marley, we haven't even started Bob Door yet! Good job! Let's put on Bob! So, what movie are we doing this week? Let's do this one. Yeah, let's do this one, you think? Let's see what we got. I'm gonna show you first. Oh, it's upside down. What the fuck is this shit? Corruption? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, corruption. Now, I had no idea what this was. What is this? I was looking at the box and I noticed that Jamie Gillis was in it. Jamie Gillis? His employee, George Payne, who we love. Okay, this is gonna be good. George Payne, Marley, guess, guess who's in this? That really nice guy from Oriental Techniques, you know? But I didn't remember ordering it at all. That was until I saw who directed it. Directed by Roger Watkins, Last House on Dead End Street. And then I remembered everything. I was so excited. Okay, I know what this is. So when I ordered this, I had no idea what was going on here. I didn't look at this. I didn't look at Jamie Gillis's face. I didn't know that Jamie goddamn Gillis was in it, let alone George Payne. The reason I have this is because I want to watch Last House on Dead End Street. I looked for it online. I couldn't find it anywhere, but somewhere I found that on this disc lies Last House on Dead End Street. So Last House House on Dead End Street was directed by drug enthusiast Roger Watkins in 1972, but wasn't released until 1977. And when it was, some people thought that the killing scenes were real. The original title for this movie was The Cuckoo Clocks of Hell, which, you know, is kind of interesting considering there are no clocks in this movie anywhere to be found. But then again, it doesn't take place on Dead End Street. That's because the producers changed it over the years to that because of all the house movies like Last House on the Left, House at the Edge of the Park. They wanted a house movie, even though this isn't one at all. And apparently Roger Watkins is just this crazy ass psycho in real life. And that's why we got it. So with that said, are you guys ready to start Last House on Dead End Street? I know I am. Let's do it. There's two discs and it's hidden on one of them. Okay, great. I don't know where it's at. I did watch Corruption and it was so horrible. So how do I find it? Oh, there it was. You just gotta keep clicking down and then the shadow of the T appears. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Play. The Last House on Dead End Street. Roger Watkins did everything in this movie, but with every job he did, he gave himself a different stage name. For instance, Brian Lawrence wrote the movie. It was produced by Norman F. Kaiser. Claude Armand does the music. But all of these people are him. So, just like Arizona, Massachusetts, Roger Watkins had a few names of his own. Victor Janos. Also Roger Watkins. So Last House on Dead End Street begins a lot like the movie Angst with a guy walking around narrating. He keeps saying, I'll show them all what Terry Hawkins can do. So he's going to show people what Terry Hawkins can do. He walks up to this giant building with all these gargoyles on it and he breaks through the window. He's crawling through that window like Coop does in the Moff Zone. There's a man wandering around inside of the building that he broke into. Is this asshole blind? It's a blind man wandering the halls. It turns out Terry Hawkins is a pornographer and he wants to get right back into making movies. Extreme movies. We see him proposing the idea to this girl who comes out of nowhere. I want to make some films here. A really weird film. You two could be in them. And he looks like Bill Hader. Exactly like Bill Hader. We might even become big superstars. Anyway, we then see him talking to his gay acting friend Ken in a red room. I guess they used to make movies together before Terry went to prison for solicitation. Now Ken is all about getting back into the movie business. His friend was like, oh, there's this chick I want you to meet. Nancy so-and-so in a cut to her and she's putting makeup on in the mirror while he talks about her. This is Nancy Palmer and she's married to a famous director. 
That guy there is Steven, and he pays Mr. Palmer to make these extreme fucked up pornos for him so he can sell them to more and more fucked up rich people and enjoy on his own. He's a bad guy. It then cuts to the girl from the beginning talking to her friend saying, come on, be in this movie, it's gonna be fun, and also you should probably sell your body too. I don't care. I don't like that weird stuff, you know? All of the dialogue in this movie was done in post, so none of it matches what they're actually saying, and it's really delightful. Because it looks weird, and what they're saying is just fucked up. And they're just sleazy, sleazy, gross people. I don't know. Oh, she said, maybe the film will be fun to do. Then, Terry goes over to his friend Bill's house, and he says, A few friends of mine and I get together and make a few movies. Uh, we need a cameraman. He Don't looks so me. much I'm like so Bill Hader. Now get all this crap together and be ready to go in an hour. One goddamn hour. You better be ready, you understand? We then go over to the Palmer's house where they're having a big party. Mr. Palmer is by himself in a library while things heat up in the other room. There's some like Igor guy who's making out with this girl and this guy was like, hey, go get your bitch. He was like, oh, okay. Meanwhile, Mrs. Palmer is getting ready to say goodbye to Uncle Tom. What? She's sitting down at a mirror and she's putting black stuff on her forehead. Oh, lots of it. We're ready for you downstairs, Mrs. Palmer, he said. And she turned around and she's in full-on black face with the white lips. Oh my god. She just walked into the living room and she's standing there and the guy took her robe off and she got down on her knees and she's in total blackface. There's this little kid serving as like a butler. And now Igor, who's got a hunchback, is whipping her. The audience is just loving it. This girl's going, ah! Like she's on America's Funniest Home Videos watching some fat guy roll down a hill. There's a lot of close-ups of her face and it's all black and shiny and glistening. After the whipping, Steven joins Mr. Palmer in the other room and Mr. Palmer says, I got a sleazy sex video for you. You want to watch it and buy it from me? He put on the porno. Steven says to Palmer, your shit is so plain anymore, nobody wants it. People are upset with you, which means they're upset with me. They want fucked up shit and you're giving me this? And they start riffing on this porno for about five minutes. So it's this woman waking up and the guy's like, I hope this is good, Palmer. She's stretching, getting out of bed, and he goes, does she got arthritis? He said, listen, Palma, I don't care what you do, but you give me something I can sell, otherwise you're out. Something different nobody's done before. Steven says, some guy named Terry Hawkins called me. Let's get together with him and maybe we'll get something done. It then cuts to Terry, who's putting masks on the two girls. He's wearing this big cape. The girls have on these bizarre see-through masks with makeup on them. And one of them is carrying the big mask, which you just put on the guy's head. Terry's mask kind of looks like a big tree stump. I think it's an ancient god. It looks like it's made of stone. Terry's mask is a bit frightening, and someone is tied to a beam. It's the blind guy we caught a glimpse of earlier. The girls are going up to the guy, and they're like fondling him, and... The soundtrack during this part is insane. But that can be said for pretty much the entire movie. Terry strangles the blind guy to death, and we see Bill videotaping it all, wearing a creepy mask of his own. <laughs> Cut to Mrs. Palmer sitting in front of the same mirror, putting on eyeshadow again, on the same eyelid. She's interrupted by a knock at the door. It's Bill Hader. He says, I left some footage with your husband and I wanted to get his opinion on it. And he barges in and they start talking and he's just Bill Hatering the fuck out of the place. Listen, you mind if I come upstairs? They chat for a bit and then start to fuck. La da dee, la dee dow, la da dee, la dee dow. Oh, there's an ass shot. La la dee, la dee dow, la da dee, la dee dow. Cut to the husband watching a film. I mean, Steven. Steven is watching this. He's watching the footage of them killing the blind guy, apparently. And he shut it off. I think he liked it. We then see Terry and Miss Palmer laying in bed, and she's like, She goes, how do you do it? How do you film it? It looks so real. They look real because they are real. 
He looked like I strangled him because I did strangle him. He just confessed to killing the man. He said, tell your husband I'll be in touch real soon. Terry calls Stephen and says, be at the old mansion tonight. And it's like, get the Palmer people here, get Susie. You're all gonna be here today at six. 6 p.m. rolls around and Stephen goes to the big building. He starts looking for Terry and he goes all the way up to the top. He opened the door and bright light, a girl with the mask bashes him on the head. Stephen wakes up and he's tied to the rafters next to the Palmers and some girl named Susie? Ken unties Susie only so he can tie her up to a chair and Terry comes in and starts tormenting her, wearing the famous mask. A little heavy on the reverb because I don't know what the fuck he's saying. It sounded like he was saying, virgin eye pulp? This is kind of creepy. And the gay guy's got some sort of fireplace poker or something? A brander. A brander. He's, he's branding the girl. And he just slashed her throat. In this next scene, they untie Palmer. And Terry says, He said, you're going to direct my film. I got a cameraman, a damn good cameraman, and I got my girls. He gets on top of him and starts, like, making him point, saying, Direct! Direct! Start directing, Palmer. Start directing. Wave your arms and direct. And Terry's like on top of the director going, come on, direct! He breaks free and he runs up this big flight of steps and is captured. And this freaks the fuck out of Terry because he starts going insane. I'm directing a fucking movie! You got no right coming up behind that movie's way! I'm directing a fucking movie! He's killing the director, screaming, I'm the director! With only two victims remaining, they select Nancy Palmer next, leaving Steven, the pervert who pays for this shit, last. They tie Nancy to a bed and there's all sorts of saws and tools and hammers and shit at the foot of the bed. Ken dresses up as a surgeon and he starts slicing into Mrs. Palmer's face. She's not flinching, she's not whimpering, she's not crying, she's not screaming. She's laying there like she's getting a facial. No wonder people thought this was real. It isn't until a few minutes later when the actress probably realized, I think I should be screaming, and she starts to scream. Terry grabs a saw and he puts it to her leg and starts to cut. The music goes insane while he saws away and she goes back to not screaming. They show this gore gratuitously as this choir screams. And that makes me think, where did Claude Armand acquire a choir anyway? Listen to the sound. So they just woke her up with smelling salts and she looked down and she has no legs. And she's also like cut up all over the face so she's just bloody as shit. Screaming. Ken gets his hands on some hedge clippers and he cuts into her stomach creating a gateway to the guts. He reaches into the hole and pulls out a bunch of real animal organs and is like, oh, these are stringy. He doesn't say that, of course, but, you know, I mean, they're playing with them like, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. we're on drugs and we're playing with guts. We're Herman Nietzsche. They're taking out her innards, not her guts, her innards. That one looks like a fucking coral reef. She's a bloody mess. It's now time to kill the man they're making the movie for. The final victim, Steve. Steve gets away and he runs down this hallway screaming and he opens a door only to be greeted by... Hi. He just ran into the gay guy in the basement and he went, hi. Here comes the cameraman, they're in the basement now. Here comes the girls with their masks. And then in the best part of the movie, they restrain Steve and... She's unzipping her pants in front of him. She has something coming out of her fly. It's a fucking hoof. She's got a deer hoof coming out of her fly, and now it's a close-up profile of the guy's face, and they're making him suck the deer hoof dick. And to make it weirder, she has deer hooves on her head, and to make that weirder, they're not actually on her head, someone's standing behind her holding them up, kind of hiding behind her. What the fuck? I then realized who Ken reminded me of. That guy looks like the guy from Almost Pregnant. The redheaded guy who Tanya Roberts fucks for some strange reason. Out of all of the men she could fuck, she fucks that guy? Ray? Why? I never understood that. 
If all she's trying to do is get pregnant, why does she go to the guy's cousin Ray? Is it because DNA? Is it, that must be it. Because why else would she fuck the fucking superintendent from Witchboard 2? Anyway, so this goes on and on till Terry gets, what's he gonna get, a gun? No, a drill. I hope you guys know what that's from. They're all walking forward at once. This is really oddly artistic. Like, we're talking criterion artistic. Close up of something. I think they just drilled his eyeball out. And they're walking backwards. They're all walking away from the camera one by one. They just walked off and it said, they were all apprehended and are now in a state penitentiary. And just like that, it's over. Oh, it's done. Terry Hawkins was played by Stephen Morrison. So that was Last House on Dead End Street. Let's put on Christopher Rage's music while we talk about this. Did you know the acronym for this movie is LOADS? I gotta say, I kind of enjoyed this movie. This movie was weird and artistic and just strange. I don't know if I'd call this a trippin' movie. I think I'd call this a movie that was made by people who were trippin'. It was just about five bad guys who made a snuff movie and the characters used in their movie happened to be rich racists. So, pretty good stuff. So what do I give Last House on Dead End Street on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a four. The acting was good, the dialogue was great, and it was fast paced. There's a lot of good stuff going on in this movie. One of my favorite scenes was when they were talking about the porno they were watching and they were just talking shit. It was so good. And it sort of gave me Manson murder vibes too, so check it out. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.